Oi, I think DCS has got a problem with its flat guns, in particular the way the AI responds when it thinks there is low light available. We're going to be using the FLAC 37 for this test, which is an 88mm German flat gun, and setting up a couple of missions to see how they behave. The 88mm FLAC 37 has an effective aerial range of about 8,000 metres. So with a little Pythagoras we can calculate that an aircraft which is approaching the gun at 8,000 feet altitude or 2,400 metres will be within range of the gun at approximately 7.6 kilometres across the map. Obviously in real life it may or may not be possible for the gun crew to physically see an aircraft which is seven and a half kilometers away, but at least we know that's the kind of distance that the aircraft can theoretically be hit, give or take a bit here and there. Now in DCS, in the mission editor, we can see what looks like some sort of detection or range circle around this gun which is drawn at 15,000 meters or so. However, I don't think we should look at this as the engagement range of the gun and we'll see why shortly. I want to test the range at which this gun will open up on an aircraft in daylight and then also in the evening around sunset. This is how I've set up my test. I have three of these 88mm 37 flat guns and I've chosen to use three different skill levels, excellent, high and average. They are placed on the beach at Utah Beach which is effectively sea level. These guns are facing out to sea. Offshore I have a single B-17 approaching the guns at 8,000 feet or 2,440 meters and I'm going to see at which range the AI will start reacting to that inbound aircraft. Here is the B-17 I've set up approaching the coast at 8,000 feet. Looking at the map you can see he's offshore there flying straight towards the guns and we'll have a look at the guns now. This is the northernmost of the three guns, the lowest skill leveled gun and this is the highest skill level gun and you can see we've now got them all lined up in the background there from highest skill level in the foreground to the lowest skill level in the background. I'm going to now just watch these guns and I'm going to observe them until the AI starts reacting to that inbound aircraft and then I'm going to pause the mission to measure the range. Okay, the center gun and the near gun and the far gun have all traversed up into a vertical position pretty much at the same time as each other. So there's no indication there that the skill levels are changing their reaction time. If we go to the map now, I've paused it and you can see the B-17 is well inside the 15,000 meter circle. And if I draw a line from this gun, the B-17 is about 8.3, maybe slightly less, 8.2 or 8 kilometers from the guns. Now because he's got a little bit of altitude he'll be just beyond that in a straight line. But that range is very consistent with what we would expect. Now we'll see if the guns will start firing. The aircraft itself I can see quite happily from the ground here with this default view. It may not show up in the YouTube video I'll try and highlight it to make it a bit more obvious, but it's certainly a lot more than a single pixel. It is a 3D model that is very, very visible indeed. If that was a formation of aircraft, that would have been visible for a long time. So there's no reason really to think that these guys shouldn't be able to see that aircraft. And certainly if I was a human player manning one of these guns or flying, that aircraft would be very obvious. Unpausing the mission now, and we'll check when these guns start firing. Should just be a few more seconds now that the weapons have traversed, and there we go. And here's the B-17, and you can see the first rounds have now started bursting pretty close behind. That's quite close in. 
they don't really need any time to get their range in. It seems the first round is pretty accurate and it's highly likely this B17 will be hit really soon. I have updated the mission start time then to 5 past 8 in the evening. It's the 21st of June, so it is mid-summer. And as you can see, there is still a lot of light in the sky. The, stun the sun is still above the horizon. I'll flick down to the view of the gunners. And here is the gun on the beach, or the three gunners on the beach. Looking up at the sky and around, you can still see there's plenty of light here available for these gun crews. And looking up at the sky, it is actually possible to make out the approaching B-17, even under these apparently low lighting conditions. The aircraft is a bit harder to see, obviously, than it was when I had the pale blue daylight sky, but the aircraft is just visible and it's more than a single dot again it's a 3d model that i can just make up visually and i'll try and highlight it for you in the video because it can be a little bit hard to see with the youtube compression so i suspect these gunners probably could visually see that there's certainly no reason to assume that the aircraft is obscured and that the gunners can't see it I'll skip forward in time now to see when the gunners open up. I can already tell it's significantly later than it was with my daylight test, so I'm going to pause the mission here. The guns have yet to react to the B-17's presence. And looking on the map now, I can see that the B-17 is significantly closer. He's now 4.8 to 5 kilometers away across the map. And looking at the view, that aircraft is almost directly overhead. That is a very, very visible black silhouette against the pale sky. There is absolutely no reason to suspect that these gunners cannot see that aircraft. It is plain as day. And when you're playing this under these conditions, and you as a human player can clearly see an aircraft but none of the AI is reacting to it. It becomes quite annoying. I'm going to unpause now, and we're going to see if these guns will track that object at all, or whether they will simply allow it to fly overhead unmolested. Still no movement from these gunners then. Looking on the map now, the B-17 has flown overhead and is now equidistant opposite direction, 4.8 kilometers out to the west. These guns have completely failed to observe that B-17 or to do anything about it, even though it was in fact arguably more visible due to the shadows on the underside than it was in the middle of the day. There is one thing we can do to try and improve the detection of these flat guns, and that is to add a commando Gerrit, which is this thing here. It's effectively a listening device, which then pinpoints the aircraft and can be used to guide the guns onto its location. Now, these will improve the accuracy of the guns and may improve the detection rate as well. The downside of putting one of these with a gun formation is that it tends to make them far too accurate during the day. I'm going to run the mission now at night with the Commando Garret sitting next to the middle gun of the three guns. So this is the nighttime run through again with a Commando Garret added to that gun battery. There's the first gun traversing at night. So there's confirmation that with the Commando Garret, the gunners will react even under these low lighting conditions. And if we now view zoom out, you can see that it has extended the detection range of this gun to way out beyond 15,000 meters. There's another blue circle drawn on the map way out here, which looks like the detection range for the Commando Gerrit, and that's out at about 30,000 meters or 30 kilometers. So at about half of that range, the 
Commando Gret is picking up this B-17 and the guns have started to traverse. That's even closer than they were detecting that aircraft during the day. Now it's a matter of waiting to see how long before the guns start firing. And there are the first rounds. So now with this Commando Gret added to the gun battery, the guns are firing bang on 8,000 meters, which is their theoretical effective range. We're now going to go back to daytime just to see whether or not this influences the effectiveness of those guns during the day. We're back to daytime then, midday. And here are our guns with the Commando Gorad sitting behind the center of the three guns. And we should fairly soon see the guns traverse, which should mimic the similar range to their traversal during the night time. There's the first gun traversing and the second and third ones in the background pausing the mission then. And it's exactly the same range as we saw during night time. I'll run the mission now just to see if that aircraft takes flak that's a lot closer than it did during the daytime mission when we didn't have the Commander Garret. So I'll let the guns fire a couple of rounds each. And now I'll go to the B-17. And we'll wait till the first rounds start landing nearby. The rounds have now started detonating and you'll see that they are possibly a little bit closer than they were without the Commando Gret. They're certainly bracketing very close to this B-17 and he's already been hit there. You can see the first bit of blast damage. He's got a, looks like an oil leak on the outer port engine. And there's all the flak bursts landing behind. So pretty effective against this B-17. I wanted to see whether the size of the aircraft made a difference at all, so I've changed the B-17 out for a P-47. This is obviously a smaller aircraft, so less visible, and it only has one engine, so it shouldn't be generating nearly as much noise as the B-17. We'll then observe to see whether these guns will open up at the same range or at nearer range. So this is daytime again, obviously, and we have the Commando Goat unit attached to these three guns. The first guns have started traversing. In fact, they've all started traversing now. I'm going to check the map, and you can see it's exactly the same range as the B-17. There is no apparent impact based on the size of the contact or its probable noise profile. So it seems to be based purely on direct range to the hostile aircraft. So what can we take from these tests? Well, I've got a few proposed ideas, some directed towards Eagle Dynamics and the rest for mission makers. So Eagle Dynamics. Firstly, I think you need to change the time of day or the lighting conditions under which the AI is clearly switching over to this low lighting state. For example, if I set up a Normandy mission in midsummer at 8.30 in the evening, it's actually very light, yet the AI is behaving as though it's already pitch black. There is too much of a difference between what the human is experiencing in terms of lighting conditions and how the AI seems to be behaving. I don't really think it should be behaving like that until nine o'clock in the evening when it's actually dark. And I think the AI should already be waking up at about 3.30 in the morning. Let's not forget though that that is midsummer. And under winter conditions, those times will be a lot earlier. So if the decision making by the AI is being based on a time of day, it makes life a bit more difficult. However, if it's actually reacting to the light that's available, it needs to happen when there's much less light. The AI is switching over to light, low light mode when it is still very light for the human player. 
Second point, there is currently not an equivalent of the commando gerät for any of the allies. So that means none of the allied flak units are detecting at night. This places the allied playing teams at a significant disadvantage after we get past these low light hours. That brings me to the third point, and that is that currently it seems that the skill levels make no difference at all. I think the skill settings in the mission editor should significantly affect at least the rate of fire and the accuracy of the gunners. Now moving on to mission makers, a couple of suggestions. Firstly, until there is a fix for these gunners and the low lighting problems, my suggestion is that you're going to need to use one of these Commando Gerät for at least the German flak batteries. Secondly, it is my suggestion that you reduce the number of flak guns in your heavy batteries down to about two or three guns total. Obviously this is a significant reduction on the historical number of guns per battery, but let's not forget that for the most part in these games, the numbers of aircraft that are flying around in our missions is significantly less than historical as well and the guns tend to focus on the first aircraft that enters their bubble which in many cases is going to be the player if you're it's a single player mission so by reducing your flak battery gun numbers down to two or three you're more likely to have a historically representative effect even if the batteries themselves are not of historical sizes you can also spread out the placement of your guns over a wider area and that will reduce the total number of guns which are firing on any object at any one time.